questions out here so we'll, we'll get them some questions and then when we've got about two minutes left I'll, I'll let you know it's uh, it's about time and we can get you over to I think we're doing a, a photo op next door from what I was told so we'll keep you on schedule and, and rolling but I know you guys were waiting and had questions I already asked you that so who's doing the first question today <coughs> all right who's got it I got one. all right go for it um, I know that there was a problem with uh, the glove prop missing on Nightmare 2. Was there any other props that ended up missing on either one of the films? Well, I was missing on one, two. We're in the same boat there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was missing in three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not a prop. Uh, it depends on how well, much we kind of are. It depends on how much they get. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't remember any of the portraits, so I'm possible. No. No. I know of. I know there was. Oh, yes. Do I need, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. It's the stage voice. Reach the back. Well, um, I know a sweater, I think it was Nightmare 3, actually, because I heard Brooke Bundy tell the story, um, that a sweater was stolen. Uh, a Freddy sweater was stolen, yeah. And that's kind of when she realized um, that, I guess this movie's kind of a big deal. Because <laughs> 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 like trying to steal some Freddy sweaters. I'm glad you reminded me. I, I give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make a scarf out of it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, this scarf was made by a fan, um, and I made a promise that I would wear it everywhere I go. And so I've been wearing it since then. We was in, uh, it was like cold up in Pennsylvania here and that one of those cold, cold. Okay. And she made me a scarf. And I promised her I would wear it every time I go on a convention. Nice. So that's, it's an honor. I didn't it's know a, that story. It's, oh, a, it's oh, an honor. Oh, she made me a Freddy, a knitted Freddy doll. Really? Yeah, but I did not make the promise that I would carry this. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and when That's I go somewhere, of you. when I go somewhere you. and I don't have it on, she does let me know. <laughs> it's like a marriage. You're indebted for yes. a while. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, um, <laughs> I'm speechless. Um, it, honestly, I didn't think it was an awful film. I, 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 I didn't. Um, I love the scene actually when it's snowing in the bedroom. I thought that was really cool. I'm actually surprised they didn't do take advantage of more CGI stuff because you know, we didn't have CGI in the 80s, but now you have it. So I thought that was an interesting choice. And uh, Jackie Earl Haley, I think, is a freaking amazing actor. I, I love his work. I love his work. But it's just, it's just you can't replace Robert England. He just has the moves down, the, the body language, the, the movement that he embodies and he created Freddie Krueger. So he's just too hard to replace. And also because the facial expressions are so important as opposed to like, you know, Jason or whatever has the ski mask. You know, but um, body language is even important in those in in those films too. But so anyway, I, I can't you know totally slam it. And I know a lot of fans have just slammed it and pisses them off. But when I when I just try to be just even keel, you know, what's the word I'm trying to yeah. use? What was your question? Hmm? Um, did you see the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street? Hey, you said you know the I remake. Thought, I thought you said that you see remakes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said, since he wrote it, so I'm glad you started talking. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, 
the good parts. Only the good parts. Yeah. yeah. We've heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know what I, said part. <laughs> I know somebody else has some questions. What do we got? What's it like working with Robert Inman? Well, just between you and me, <laughs> he's fantastic. <laughs> I've met him in person. He He's so engaging, um, he's incredibly intelligent. He can talk about anything, film, art, theater, architecture, I mean, you, you name it. He's, yeah. he's just such a, a worldly guy. If and, you, yeah. If you spend 10 minutes with Robert Engel, you will feel that you have sit in on a lecture at Harvard again. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. He's an extraordinary, gifted man. He has worked with some of the best. Shakespearean actor. He can do it all. And on the set with me, uh, part three and part four, Robert was, when he took away that, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your hall pass? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say sit in the back, but you knew the room. <laughs> uh, I was going to say sit in the corner. <laughs> just a gifted person and he made us all feel so loved on the set, so loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he already had like, five, he had notoriety already, he was doing V and, and whatnot, but he was not, had no pretense about him whatsoever. We all had the same goal to make the best film that we could and and he, he was just um, really down to earth guy. You know? and it's also to tell you what a professional yeah. he, he is. It's because it took him some time, three to five hours, to get in that makeup, to sit there and get in that makeup and still have a personality. I come there and he don't have you no know, bacon and eggs in my personality. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> but he, and, he, and he kept that, you know, that personality sitting in that chair. We walk into the makeup room and he's in the makeup room. He brought life to me. Oh my God, when you said action, where we came to life. Mm -hmm. That was not the first that was said to the chair. Yeah. 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 It's too big for me to say that. Well, and, and actually, it's, I, so the night before, about um, so I had virgin platinum blonde hair, and um, my but my headshot back then were black and white, glossy headshots. I had a full of hair. <laughs> and and, and, um, and they, in fact, they wouldn't even let me audition because they looked nothing like how they pictured Alice. And I would agree, you know, they couldn't find their actor, their actress. So finally, I got an opportunity to the audition. Like hundreds of people got to audition, went in, dirty hair. There is a point to the story. Um, pale yellow, my absolute worst color. And I, you know, read the script. I totally bonded with Alice. Anyway, got the role. But they said, would you dye your hair red? So, and I was like, yes. Um, but actually it ended up being a rinse put on every single morning. So Robert and I spent quite a bit of time in that makeup room. Because <laughs> I'm in the chair getting a rinse put on and then took two blow dryers on each side to dry my hair and stuff. So Robert and I had a lot of time to uh, talk about, I don't know, he was redecorating his bathroom or something. We were talking about grout colors and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> and then we're on set and all of a sudden it's like, Freddie, you know what I mean? So, it's, uh, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> Speaking of, which I didn't know, is that uh, when I auditioned for the role, it was not the role that they wanted me for. And so, I didn't want to be there. And I, you know, because I think I've told the story before, I had to go to court that day. I didn't have a car. It was raining. In fact, it was raining here yesterday. 
And so, and the audition was on this side of town, and I had to go to court on this side of town. Uh, so I had to catch like three buses. Uh, so by the time I got there, I had such a pissed off attitude. <laughs> I, I didn't want to be there. And so, and all the guys that was in there had these nice bodies, and I looked like, you know, a pure very dope body and bait. But, you know, <laughs> and I just wanted to go home. So when I went into the audition, I had the attitude that I didn't want to be there. <laughs> they thought I was acting. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got home, my agent had called. This was back when they had those big old bouncer machine that you had to hit. Yes. <laughs> yes, and rewind. The rewind. And my agent had called um, about seven times. Or six, seven times. Oh. He was, can't call me. So I called him the first thing I said, I told you I didn't want to go there. And he said, they love you. <laughs> so I can relate to it. It's the funny things that happen yeah. a little bit after. It didn't work on the next audition, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got, I mean, I really didn't like part four, but I could do it here. Wonderful job. Thank you. But, that girl in that movie is so annoying. I just want to correct. Which one? I want to replace Patricia Arquette. No. That's who's name will. I'm just, like, what the hell? She ruined the whole I'm movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know who's going. Woo! Hey, but, you know, cool. <laughs> thank you. We well, got one. Thank you. I thought you were going to say you didn't like the movie because they killed you too soon. Wait a minute now, i got a question for you too. That's the very first thing they filmed for the movie? Was he getting killed? Or did they film it later? I know they filmed movies. They got all they, I think it was one of the first things they filmed. They, they filmed. But let me say something about Tuesday night. Tuesday night, when we first came to the set, she came to us and she was so loving. And as an actor and as someone that was playing Ken K, she picked up the baton and she went right away. And she made that role hers to me as Ken K. And so I have nothing but love for her. Now, you know, I just, I just need to say that because I love her. I love her. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, absolutely. I mean, Tuesday and I are yeah, friends forever, for life and stuff. But you were certainly allowed to have your opinion and whatnot. And she, I mean, she had a tough, I mean, she, she had some tough. How do, you, how do you fill the footsteps of a character that's already been established? I mean, it's right. almost, it's, it's kind of like the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street with Jackie Earl Haley playing the right, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's, it's, See, I made the director hire her because he had a crush on her. Oh, then you should watch any movies. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, people are hired because they have a crush on That That's natural in life. In life. Mm -hmm. People say in Hollywood because y'all want to throw shit on Hollywood. Shit <laughs> down in Hollywood be happening in life. He only got the road because he slept in Go down to Kiko, uh, go to the <laughs> Somebody got that role, probably still survive. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I know anybody, so don't. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll look at her. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Go on. Just, yeah, what, what do you remember from your final kill scene in the series, you know, for, for each of you? From how you died, you know, how Freddy was going to take you out, all that. You mean like our favorite? No, just, how did you think? Well, they said this is how you're going to go. I didn't now, get killed. <laughs> true, but you know, we got to eat. <laughs> so the guns and people got slides, you know. Everybody got killed differently. Yes, which is what's, I think, one of the reasons why we love Nightmare on Elm Street is because the, the kills are so clever, you know. <laughs> they take your worst fear, like, oh, you don't like bugs? I'm going to turn you into a cockroach, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I don't, I didn't have, I mean, I didn't get killed. You got killed. So I, mean, I got killed, and you want to know how did I feel? Mm -hmm. I, I cried <laughs> because it was my last paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most people don't know this, and this is only a rumor that I heard, is that if you notice when he killed me, I said, I will see you in hell. There was a rumor that Kim K was going to come back and fight Freddy and help Douglas. Mm. How true that is, I don't know. Did it happen? No. But <laughs> there was a script. Well, it was uh, it was like the police patrol. The Dream Warriors came back or something. Mm. But um, on a, on a serious note, it was very sad because it was just me and Robert and. You know, and I realized that last tape was the end of Ken Kate, but then that was when someone told me they're trying to find a way to bring you back. So I didn't know if they did want to see me crying like a bit. He was crying. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it was. Yeah. And I'm the only one to say something like, I see you in hell. So that was supposed to be Like I said, yeah. 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 Yes. I was just going to say, four is actually one of my favorites, because I love you guys so much, but I was very disappointed that you were killed too soon. Me too. I was so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was too. But I understand, as a writer, they had to get rid of the old so they could move on, you know, and so we graduated, and we were Lisa and the rest of them, they took over, they they picked up the baton, and they made four just as mm -hmm. much of a success as the others that part Yeah, um, I know that Randy Harlan was kind of down and out before he made four, and I was wondering what, uh, what it was like working with him, and maybe some of your thoughts on working with Rodney Eastman as well. Um, Rodney and I, Rodney just got married. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you were at the wedding, right? Yes. Yes, and I was at the wedding too. You didn't see me, I was the only spot there. <laughs> 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 no, I was not. I didn't think I was there. Yeah, we got married in Vegas. We got great. married in Vegas. We got married in Vegas. And Rodney and I, uh, we, we don't see each other. At least and I, we don't see each other every day or every week. But when we do see each other, it's like we just saw each other yesterday. Yeah. And that's the kind of friendship that we have. And with all the cast. Yeah, with all the cast. With all so, the cast, it's bizarre. I, I know you hear this when the uh, Friday the 13th and Halloween comedy talk about how much love they are with the cast, but we really are the family. We really are. Can you hurt one of us? You hurt all of us. And we believe that. With his mother, by the way, whose name is Lisa. <laughs> it may have helped me get the part. Anyway. <laughs> and, and uh, and back then it was payphones, guys. <laughs> okay, and he wanted to call his mother, and um, so Bob Shea had all these rolls of quarters for him to use to call to call his mother in Europe. So um, anyway, but I love what you said about even if you're down and out, you have to when you audition or just in life in general, you still have to act like yeah, you know, I'm up here. You just yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. Know that it's in nice each philosophy. one of you, there is a goal. I don't care where you are, there is a goal. It's your life. It's your life. If you let each one of your heartbeats have a purpose. And I always say that each one of my heartbeats is somebody who believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. So since it beats, it's supposed to be 72 minutes, times a minute, I have 
72 spirits that's inside of me. <laughs> so, my well, my favorite parts of the Nightmare movies are like his comedic timing. Does he do that like just ad lib, or is that, is that written for him? My experience has been mostly written, but he will ad lib too. He, you know, we will work on always making, perfecting a line or perfecting an expression. And I would say we had the freedom to do that in these films. Now, this is not always the case in every job. <clears throat> like, when you work for network television, <laughs> you need to have every single word down or, the, or you're fired, you know? Against <laughs> those I can not do shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was my breaking ground. Yeah. It's crazy. Thirty oh, pages a day, no. and you do one take, maybe two occasionally, but and then you're just on, on, on. It was a great training ground. Yeah. Yeah. For memorizing and blocking and all of that, you didn't have. There's no time to waste. They move so fast. And I did stand up and I was a former staff writer for I, I, but as for my character. Sometimes match pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. lines and everything. Occasionally, they let me say something about it. Because originally, he came and was for a white guy. So I would say to him, the black guy wouldn't say that. So then he would say it how a black guy would say it. Yeah. And I mean, they gave us leeway. They gave us leeway. They, they did. <laughs> and, and Robert, for sure, too. And it's your sort of thing. And then, interesting enough, during Nightmare 4, the Writers Guild strike was happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we were, uh, there's a, a, a particular scene that um, with me and Rick, Andras Jones, who was my brother, in the den, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching the video, and Kristen has been killed. And he comes in, he's like, What are you doing, Alice? Da da da. And I start talking about Freddie. I could smell the smoke. I could feel the heat from the fire with the, something along those lines. Anyway, we wrote that. We, we sat in our trailer and we created that, with that scene. Oh, wow. So, anyway, Writers Guild can come, come ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? So, I have more of a comment than a, than a question. Um, unfortunately, my mom couldn't be here. She, we lost her to a seven year battle with cancer. But one of the things I wanted to tell both of you uh, how thankful I am because picture this sweet little old lady. She doesn't curse. And I'm not just saying that because she's my mom, but she's a wonderful human being. She loved, I mean, loved both your performances and A Nightmare on Elm Street. And it was so funny because here this sweet little old lady is, and she's like, oh, honey, did you see how he sliced her up? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sometimes I wonder, is something wrong with my mom? You know? But, but uh, I just want to, on behalf of her and in honor of her, just thank you so much for making her her years, and especially towards the end of her life, she would watch the movies over and over again. And it meant so much to our family to see her happy in those moments. So thank both of you for your performances and everyone else that worked on the film. So you love your mom. I love my mom. Yeah. So let me give her a <laughs> oh, so I, I, Because my mom left me the same way. So I'm thank you. I, I left, my mother left me the same way. So I don't know how it feels. And I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. Yes. Um, it means a lot to me because my mother passed away yesterday. Oh my gosh. I'm and sorry. I'm glad to be here because there's so much. Um, on my table, there's mom stories regarding certain things. And um, anyway, she had two and a half years of pancreatic cancer fighting that. So I learned yesterday morning she passed away. So thank you for sharing that. And can I say something? I, I know that for me, we come to these events, I know you got to me again, to these events and you all put us on such a little pedestal and some steps or, or whatever, but before I leave, I would like to say to each and every one of you that we are who we are because of you. And that is why don't let any celebrity or anyone disrespect you because you are our man. We need our man. So no matter how
how I would fly is because of you. And so I just want to, if it's nothing else, say thank you. I do appreciate you. to me as a performer, you know, as well as a human too, but as a performer, so it, it means a lot. So, thank you. We, we are, I, I, I have not said this to Lisa, but I, you know, I've watched Lisa many years when I've been doing the convention, so I learned how to be a better person at the convention by watching <laughs> <laughs> She knows how to go, she knows how to talk, she knows how to go to the parties. When, when it's over with me, my ass up in the room. <laughs> Lisa's out. <laughs> he was in Vegas. Rodney getting married. She was nowhere in the sight. There was Lisa at the wedding. <laughs> this is the first time we've been together. Isn't it? On a panel. Yeah, just the two of us. Yeah, it's fucking nice. And I'd say that was a pretty good first time. You guys were awesome. Yeah. <laughs> good it's called respect. When you respect someone, you don't have to rehearse to be in that company. And I respect you. No, I totally respect you. I what you represent. Thank you for the work you do in your life. So, yeah. And we've got chemistry. Yes. And we do it. I will. <laughs> We can get you out of this one quick because that, that is our 30 minutes there. Crypticon, let's give it up. And you guys, they're just going to be right next door doing their photo op. So if you want to step right on over there, get your photo taken with them, and then go hang out with them at the booth. It'll be a great time. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.